Should we exchange you? Yes. My name is Vladimir, I am a journalist. We record video interviews with stories. We are doing this in order to exchange you for our prisoner of war. Would you mind if we publish this conversation? No. What is your name? Where are you from? Pankov Anatoly Konstantinovich, July 23, 1974. The city of Dimitrov, now Mernograd, Donetsk region. I am accused of communicating on the internet, in the Telegram channel, with a person from the armed forces of the DPR and LPR. Yes. I told him about what was happening in our city, where military units of the Ukrainian armed forces were stationed and moving. They were with equipment, I marked it on the map. Can you talk about these situations that are described here? I have already told in detail that I work at a mine in the city of Dimitrovo. Ukrainian army personnel were moved to our second floor. Yeah. This outraged us. Why are armed forces needed where people are constantly present? Yes. We were afraid that a rocket might fly here. I've already talked about this before. Fine. And they were also in other places, such as school, kindergarten. You named about a dozen places where the military were located. Yes. They are all listed here. The whole city knows about it. I resented this. When you communicated with this person, who was he? I thought he was a fighter, ordinary soldier of the LPR and DPR. That's what he called himself. But then, when I read the verdict, I realized that the SBU had put its own man there. And this person may no longer be alive. I met him on Odno Klasniki, he came to my page. And then he just asked me to join his Telegram channel. Easier to communicate. Private messages on Telegram? Yes, exactly. So did you know who he was? An enemy fighter, so to speak. For someone, but not for me. Did you plead guilty? Yes. You pleaded guilty. How many years did you get? Ten. Appeal? No. Do you want an exchange? Yes. Relatives? Yes. How do you feel about what Russia has been doing here for the last year and a half? I don't blame Russia. Do you not condemn rocket attacks on peaceful cities? What about eight years of attacks on Donetsk? Got it. This is Russia's revenge for eight years? Perhaps I am a Russian person, as I understand it. What do you know about the Russian-Ukrainian conflict since 2014? I don't think there was a Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Donbass expressed the opinion that it should become united, independent, simply self-elected, like Crimea. I would describe it like this, but, as part of Ukraine, the Yanukovych government, as far as I understand, was overthrown on the Maidan. People came to power who, due to their ambitions, did not want the secession of Donbass and led their armed forces against the people. After this, groups of people formed in the Donetsk People's Republic, as they called themselves, and in the Lugansk People's Republic began to fight for their independence. They sought to ensure their own territorial independence and independence. Russia helped them in this. As far as I understand, after that the war came to a standstill, so to speak. Later, the Minsk agreements began. Although the Minsk agreements were not welcomed by Ukrainians, the government should have simply withdrawn troops from these territories, and the Donetsk People's Republic should have elected its own government. But as part of Ukraine. According to her laws. Exactly. How can there be elections according to Ukrainian laws if there are no Ukrainian observers, no Ukrainian law enforcement officers, no Ukrainian campaigning, nothing at all? How can this happen under the laws of Ukraine? I am not a politician and did not delve into this, but it seemed to me that the Donetsk Republic acted as agreed, as it was written in the agreements.
These are the Minsk agreements, please read them point by point. What kind of law is this? Law. Special status for certain regions. On self-government of Donetsk and Lugansk regions. What law? I don't know. It's a pity, because Ukraine fulfilled this point. Not only that, there was a disengagement of troops. Ukraine adopted this law. This is the law that Ukraine adopted. On the temporary order of local self-government in certain areas of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, and before that there were the Minsk agreements, which also spoke about this law, and Ukraine not only adopted this law, but also the disengagement of troops took place. As for the following points, they have not been implemented. What do you think the Donetsk and Lugansk regions wanted to become? Independent. Separate? Yes. You are correct, that is exactly what the ballot said. It's just that some people claim they wanted to become autonomous. No, not Russian and not autonomous, but simply independent and working according to their own program. The Minsk agreements speak of a certain special status, that is, a certain autonomy. Some autonomy. Did your city go to a referendum? Yes, the 11th of May. What were the results? The city supported the Donetsk People's Republic. Who even held this referendum? How did it even happen? Local authorities. Issues of territorial integrity are resolved through an all-Ukrainian referendum. According to Ukrainian legislation, it was carried out illegally. According to my information, because I communicate with residents of the occupied territories, and I communicate because they are prisoners of war. It wasn't 90%, not even 80%. Of the 100 people I talked to, five were involved in the referendum. Everyone else either worked, went to work, or simply didn't go there. I mean, millions of people have left the area. Most of them did not come to the referendum. So what, in this case, could be the opinion of the residents of Donbass? In my city, many people went to the referendum. In Mernograd? Dimitrov. Dimitrov. I was there and did not see any pro-Russian sentiments there. In 2014 this was true. How do you know? Did you follow the referendum? No, I wasn't in control of the situation, I was just there. As a former law enforcement officer, when I worked in the Ministry of Internal Affairs, I participated in mass events. I can look and tell you how many people are present at a given event. This is understandable, but you cannot know exactly how they vote. I cannot. Did you somehow unambiguously decide for all the people what they want, and did not see the Ukrainian rallies in Donetsk, where people came out with flags against Russia? They opposed disunion and any referendums. No. I won't show video archives now. You can watch it later if you want. People went to rallies, they were beaten, and those who disagreed were closed. Do you think this is normal? Where physical measures are used, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. This is where it all started. There were quite a lot of people there who wanted to live in Ukraine. What were the Russian military and Russian equipment doing in Donbass? This has helped. If the residents wanted this, then what did they do there? I think it was some kind of help. That is, they came to help some part of the residents? They helped not the part that left after their arrival, and not the one that didn't care, but the one that wanted to join Russia. Part of the population of Donbass who wanted Russia. I don't know. So I know. These people were 5%. 5% of people really wanted Russia. These were people who ran with flags, went to referendums and created the picture that they want Russia. It's 5 to 10%, maybe 15. 
This is if we take everyone together, starting with those who were there initially. So what happens? Russia started this whole mess in Donbass because of some small part of the population. What about the population who didn't care or who supported Ukraine? They are people too. If Russia had not entered there in 2014, would it have been both? Let's think logically. Think logically, please. If Russia had not come, NATO would have done it. NATO? Tell me about it. Why are they here? Who has NATO killed in Ukraine during 30 years of independence? I don't know about this. Well, what do you have in mind? Literally. Did NATO kill anyone? Did NATO conduct a military intervention in Ukraine? Not yet, but they are here. What? Troops. Troops? Certainly. Their bases are here, there. Tell me the NATO base in Ukraine. Why are you asking me? I don't have any proof documents. You don't have any documents, and you don't even have any idea about it. You're just operating on rumors. Yes it is, and from television too. You can hear about the fact that there are NATO bases here on Ukrainian television only if you really want to, because Ukrainian television has never talked about a NATO base. The NATO base is closed. Medical experiments are being conducted there, as was the case under Yanukovych. You are not talking about NATO bases. You are talking about biological laboratories. Yes, about them. No NATO bases? No. I don't have to prove to you that they don't exist, because you're talking about biological laboratories, and that's a little different. I'm talking about the fact that the tests are being carried out on our territory. Ukrainian authorities were not allowed there. The area was closed. This territory was not controlled by the government. No. Biology labs. This may sound a little scary, but let me ask you this. How do you even envision it? Biology labs? Well, I guess they test the drugs on rats and other animals. What if it gets out of control? Look, we have places in the markets. Meat. Places where you can check the content of certain pesticides and negative additives and substances. Yes. Is the place where, for example, tomatoes are tested at the market a biological laboratory? No. Why laboratory? They don't invent anything there. They just test it. Yes, this is a biological laboratory. What's the point? The point is to find out through appropriate manipulations whether there are negative substances in this tomato. To do this, you need to take a sample. Yes. Take a sample from a tomato and test it. This is called a biolab. You said it was like a little mini biolab, right? Why am I giving such a primitive example? Because biolabs are a good thing. It's not bad, it's good. Biolaboratories are one of the signs of human evolution. All these checks and actions that are carried out in biological laboratories are normal for any country. And if this country cooperates, for example, with the United States, which is more developed in this direction, there is nothing wrong with this either, not at all. And here's the myth that the Americans, on our rats or, much less, humans, were testing something here and wouldn't let anyone in. They don't disclose what's going on there. Who should report to you? The people want to know. What people? The people of Ukraine. Did you write the application? No. What kind of people want to know? I, for one, don't want to know everything about everything. It's not like I'm writing requests to all the factories that make pots and pans. You should have written. The strangers came and started here. Aliens? Uh, well, uh. They didn't come on their own. There must be an international agreement to conduct certain tests. What's the problem? Why should I care? Is there any evidence of harm? No. 
If there was evidence of negative impact, that it had a bad effect on someone, then yes. But the activities of the bio-laboratories are talked about from the Russian side, and no one has seen the results of the work of these bio-laboratories yet. Let's reason logically, if we had infected seagulls, geese, bats, mosquitoes and others that should have wiped out the Slavs specifically. Stupidity. They should fly to Russia and find exactly the Slavs there. They should have destroyed the Slavs there without leaving the geographical territory of Russia. But why haven't they done it until now? We're all Slavs. Okay. We have one ethnicity, we are all Slavs. Why? In Ukraine, almost everything. Slavs. Not everyone in Russia is Slavic. Lots of ethnicities. Yes. These birds were to destroy the Slavs, with the exception of the Buryats and Tuvinians. That's nonsense. It's really funny, but it's on their TV. And what you're saying is funny too. There were closed labs where no one was allowed in. Can you elaborate on that? Biolabs are as closed as factories. Go to a tank factory and try to do what you want to do, but you won't succeed. It's just that the emphasis here is that it's not ours. More specifically, foreigners. Well? Strangers. So what? Strangers in our territory. What's next? That's why ordinary people have questions. What ordinary people? Nobody asks what is happening at the Yuzhmash plant. Ordinary people who watch Russian television? Yes, I won't repeat myself, but they tell even more terrible things. Why do they think biolabs are so scary? We've had them since the year 95 or 2005, I don't remember. 90s. Since, 95. Why are they so interested in them in the 22nd year? Where are the negative consequences of these biolabs? That's what worries me the most. Why is it so easy to convince the Russian average person, who does not know what a biolaboratory is, that it is bad? Probably because he has never been interested in it. Maybe. And this is a consequence of what? Illiteracy? A consequence of the illiteracy of society and a solution to some personal problems. Everyone solves some of their own problems, but the average Russian is so easily frightened by the biolab because they know nothing about it, but think it is by definition something scary. If Americans, it's a disaster for sure. Where are the consequences? What terrible thing did it entail? Can anyone prove it? Not yet. They didn't. No one has shown this, but what nonsense Mikhalkov is talking, or this. Here, about the dehumanization of the school. This is an ordinary Zaporozhye school number 106. The boys of the third and fourth grades are offered by their teachers to feed tits in their natural history lesson, because they are yellow-blue Ukrainian, and in every possible way to deprive the snowbirds of support, and even better to hunt them, because these birds symbolize. That's bullshit. This is bullshit. Grown-ups talk nonsense. Everyone listens to this crap. My child is in school, but they don't tell him about it. I'm telling you it's bullshit to one degree or another. The Russian information segment is full of all sorts of nonsense designed for different audiences. On Ukrainian television, Irina Faryan also says various stupid things. Of course, only Ukraine doesn't launch missiles at Russia. That, unfortunately, is our problem. That's right. I'm getting a little off topic here. Drone attacks are already in full swing. Yes. That's fortunate. I mean, Ukraine did not invade or attack Russia. Here's the answer to your question. They say stupid things everywhere, but they attacked us. 
Now back to where we started. First of all, they attacked because this is retaliation for eight years of Donbass. We talked, and it turned out that you have no information about this. How many people moved from there? What percentage of people voted? Why did the Russian troops go in there? You can't answer because it's very easy to respond with the usual phrase that history does not bear the subjunctive mood. Then we talked about NATO bases, which, as it turned out, are not and have not been in Ukraine either. Biological laboratories, which, as it turned out, had done no harm to anyone. And all the while Russia is brainwashing those who believe in fairy tales about titbirds. Others, who are also illiterate but a bit smarter and don't listen about such things, are simply told about the biolabs of the Americans. And they believe it too, because they don't think about it. What else? What is the justification for Russia bombing our country for a year and a half? No answer. You don't have an answer, and yet you knowingly surrendered Ukrainian military facilities. What were you guided by? I don't agree that the armed forces were standing in the city. Didn't Russian troops stand in the cities? I don't know if they were standing or not. You don't know? Let them fight on the battlefield. They stand occupying residential neighborhoods. There are many videos and evidence, and they themselves do not deny it. And ours are standing too, because that is the reality today. You're blaming us, not them. Do you consider yourself Russian? Yes. Ukrainian passport? Yes. Why didn't you go there? I wanted to. You actually had the opportunity to go to Russia. Yes. Who are the Russians? Give a general definition of the word Russian. Nationality. Tell us more about that. You are exactly Russian. Who's a Russian? Probably because I was born in the USSR. Great. Many people were born in the USSR, for example, Georgians, Lithuanians and other peoples, but not everyone says they are Russian. Everyone defines himself. I define myself as Russian, although I was born in Uzbekistan. The further you go, the more Russian you become. I am explaining to you that you can either believe or know that you are a descendant of people who inhabited Russia and still be Ukrainian. Because a Ukrainian is not a Russian. Ukrainian is citizenship plus nationality. That is, you can fully identify yourself as a Ukrainian, or you can consider yourself a Ukrainian but still be a Russian, it's your right. Why do you need to live in Russia? When Rus was here, present-day Russia didn't even have a capital. Why, if you are Russian, do you have to love Russia? including the USSR. For you it's all inseparable, the USSR, Russia, Rus, Russians, yes. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. I live in Donbass, when there will be a Russian Donbass, I will live in Donbass. It is if you get out or if you are taken to Russia, maybe you will live in Russia. Are they taking you away? We'll see. Will they pick you up? Yes. You're one of them, aren't you? Yes. You are thinking like an average Russian. Maybe. You can't explain anything, but you know something, and more specifically, you're not interested in politics. Pankov Anatoly Konstantinovich, July 23, 1974. Convicted under Article 114. Paragraph 2, Part 3, Dissemination in Social Networks of Information about the Movement, Location of the AFU, as well as their dislocation. Please take me on exchange to the Russian Federation. What can you tell us about the exchange? POW exchange? Russia does not want to take POWs. Why? Why? What's the matter? Isn't there some mechanism for this? There are more than enough opportunities. What's the matter? 
because Russia initially hid that they had casualties and prisoners, because they, I mean, they're saying, they promote the information concept that Russia is the greatest country. They said that they had the biggest army, that they needed two or three days to take Kiev. What did they say? We only raise an eyebrow. And there will be no Ukraine. And it turned out that their great soldiers are in our captivity. But they are not the greatest at all. The soldiers don't even know what they went here to fight for. When I look at them, I feel sorry for them sometimes. Because of ideology. What? Because of ideology. What is the ideology of beggar slaves? They came here simply because they were told, the first option, if you don't go, we'll put you in jail, and the second option, we'll give you 200,000 rubles. Basically, these reasons can change places, and which one is primary here, I don't know. They don't defend their home like we do. They don't protect their families. They come here for the money. If they don't go, they will be imprisoned. Does this army stand a chance? They're trying to beat us with numbers of people, but they're not succeeding. A year and a half. So something's getting in the way of that. Something? Yes. I think someone. I think something. What? Ukraine's global politics have nothing to do with it. So it's not the Ukrainian military killing Russian scumbags? That's not the point. I mean global politics, i.e. Russia makes decisions together with Europe and the US. Without Ukraine. What does Russia decide? Sanctions? No, she's solving her own problems. Political issues. Let Russia solve them. Are we talking about problems with you? Russia created its own problems. Putin is responsible for 250,000 corpses. Also, prisoners of war. I don't know who decides what. How many in Ukraine? How many in Ukraine? Why should we voice our statistics? We are at home. If we don't defend ourselves, our enemies will come and rape our women and kill our children. You can't compare us to you. You are always comparing. What about Ukraine? We're at home. We're home, you know? Many people have already left this country. Not everyone is ready to defend themselves. What's next? The population is not increasing. No. And what? Does this somehow justify Russia? We're talking. I just want to say that Russian prisoners of war turned out to be not such great military men as they were portrayed on TV. They will be taken to Russia, they will come there and tell, even if only in a whisper, the truth. No matter what repressive methods the security services apply to them, they will still tell the truth. They will say that there are no Nazis in Ukraine, as they tell you on TV. You have seen no fascists, no NATO bases, no biolabs, but you have seen the same ordinary people you are fighting. But we know what we're fighting for and they don't. So they don't really want to bring the POWs home. It's not profitable for them. I'm not saying that the Russians don't care about their own people at all. Everything was done by one sick Fuhrer and so many people suffer as a result. Nothing would have happened, no one would have gotten hurt, no one would have died, that's true. There is only one truth. Right, and in this case, two, when they take you away. What I'm doing now may turn out to be a completely useless labor in general. So I don't even have much inspiration. It's just that you're the last one and you have a lot of time, so you can have a long conversation. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. And if you are not taken back to Russia, and most likely you will be, we will produce motivational videos like this one. 
because you are exactly the kind of person Putin was talking about in his February 24th address. You're the one they're here to protect from someone. They claim they are. We take you by the hand and say, take him to your place. They wanted to protect you very much, let them just take you away, just take you to Russia. They'll take you away? If that's what they wanted, they would have taken you already. If so, then your work was not in vain. I did the work not to return you to Russia, but to ensure that the Ukrainian returned home.